Today's Staten Island Ferry was one I hadn't written on before. All aboard the Senator John J. Markey. TV reports of my distant youth were redolent with that name. He represented Staten Island in the New York State Senate for half a century. Many of the folks boarding with me were intent on shooting pictures of the Statue of Liberty. But my destination was Huguenot, the sixth stop on the Staten Island restaurant tour. My strolling and eating survey structured around stations on the Staten Island Railway. The place is named for the French Protestants who fled persecution in the 17th century to found one of the first permanent settlements in Staten Island. I had thought of the island as almost exclusively Catholic, but this area's name suggests otherwise, and on my walks I have passed several denominations of Protestant churches. I wonder how many other stereotypes are still lurking in the back of my brain. Huguenot is not easy to spell until you realize there are two U's on either side of the G. The station house connecting the platforms is the only one I've seen so far to be faced in brick, a rich wine red and neatly reported in the relatively recent past. This episode of the SIRT could easily have followed the same pattern as previous ones in Richmond Valley and Pleasant Plains, a walk toward Raritan Bay and back. A couple of promising pizza joints beckoned near the Huguenot station. But this time I decided to walk away from the water and cross the Korean War Veterans Parkway, which slashes through the center of the area to the neighborhood's other half. It's called Woodrow. I guess I might have billed this episode as Woodrow rather than Huguenot. But I reached it via both Huguenot and Woodrow Avenues, and to be consistent with my practice of naming episodes after the nearest SIR stop, Huguenot it is. Shortly after I crossed the highway, I passed some beautiful houses. The most dignified and beautifully ornamented ones came first, the more modest and immodest ones later. These offered a tasteful combination of solidity, muted earth tones, and sub-McMansion size. I wouldn't mind living here. No trip to this end of Staten Island is complete without the pedestrian non sequitur I dread, that is, the sidewalk that abruptly runs out, and a forced street crossing. With few crosswalks and fast-moving traffic on the main traffic arteries, that can take a while. Might be nice to live here too, though. Here's some more recent McMansion construction. Is the sky commenting on this house? What is God trying to tell us here? The Christmas decorations are out. These are as tall as the house. I saw them looming on a side street and went a little out of my way to capture Mega Frosty. And there's Mr. Grinch behind him. Good job with the tire pump. Gosh, I hope they used a tire pump. The Woodrow United Methodist Church, a Protestant presence, a place of reflection for the living and eternal rest for the late. The sky seems fine with that. My destination was Woodrow Village, a shopping mall larger than the one in Richmond Valley where I had Part 3's Middle Eastern meal. This is only the front of the place. There's even more in back with more parking. To get the back portion into the frame required an extra skinny panorama. Can you see all that? There's a whole lot of eating going on there, including the omnipresent pizza and Mexican options, and the Woodrow Diner. Fina's farmhouse in Arthur Kill was as close to a diner as I'd gotten so far on the tour, so I'd been long overdue to get back to where I once belonged. Woodrow Diner, it is your turn to shine. Love that scallop seating. A few diners were concerned to see me taking pictures of the interior before I left. I am constantly torn between showing public places and the risk of violating privacy. The journalist in me says, if you're in a public place, you forfeit your right to privacy. Privacy in public is a contradiction in terms. The human says, give people a break and respect their wishes, especially since you're a stranger here. It's an ongoing thing in my mind now that I've moved beyond tech writing. What to do about the human element? The human in this element didn't seem to mind. Lunch specials for a Friday afternoon. It's a kind of diner-Italian fusion, which seems to be the norm here on the island. The Cajun grilled chicken salad offered the two food groups that dominate my healthy senior diet, and while I often eat outside my nutritional comfort zone on tour trips, I was happy to eat normally for a change. The phone's food porn setting brings out the color in the grilled chicken, while soft focusing the rest, as though the grilled chicken were coming to us in a dream. Note Italian dressing nicely served in a bowl, sitting on a saucer, presumably to guard against sloshing instead of a messy plastic bottle. Counting the appetizer you haven't seen yet, six different pieces of crockery went into this meal. The dishwasher must keep busy. This is a different version of the same subject with the regular photo setting as I fold around with my phone cam. 
This one distributed focus more evenly, and the color not retouched in either picture is more as it was in real life, under the muted grayish lighting. The chicken was well done, just how I like it, because undercooked chicken does things to my complexion. 66 years old, and I still have pimples. Go figure. It must be a sign of passion. The seasoning had just a touch of heat and a lot of salt, which is hazardous to a kidney stone sufferer. But that day's breakfast and dinner were low sodium, so my urinary tract went unscathed. My body is an ongoing science experiment. It seems happy as long as I keep feeding it chicken and veg. The special came with an appetizer, my choice of matzo ball or Manhattan clam chowder. I went for the first and found Orso floating beneath the surface, a nice touch. The slaw was fresh and tasty, and an entire cucumber must have died to produce that generous bunch of pickle slices. I wonder if the Manhattan clam chowder was equally as good. I always feel blessed when I get back to the Staten Island Railway just before a train arrives. One is an excellent number when you're waiting for a train. Back on the ferry, Lady Liberty was still there. I pray the values she represents will survive the coming storm. Next stop on the Staten Island restaurant tour will be Annadale, where Italian and diner options are duking it out for my attention. Who will be the lucky winner may depend on how much I decide to walk that day. Should I stay near the station or stretch my legs? I never know what'll happen next until my feet hit the street. If you're enjoying the Staten Island restaurant tour, you can follow the blog version at medium.com. To follow the YouTube version, click follow next to my name at the top. Then click subscribe to get emails on new episodes. See you soon.